Hello again, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back for the second time today. Uh, in this video, we're going to be decorating the cover of our junk journal folio that we made in the last video. Uh, you may still enjoy this, even if you're not using it on a folio. The tips I'm going to be sharing can be used when decorating any junk journal. I'll be covering it quite thoroughly, so it is really good for beginners. And yeah, let's just crack on with it. So here I am again to decorate my little trifold journal. So I mentioned in the first part I'm going to be decorating it with this gilded lily paper collection. I've got a couple of, look, a couple of part pads of this. So yeah, it is lovely. It's my old paper stash that I really need to use up instead of buying new. Now I've chosen for the front this page of cut apart. I want to use that one. Yeah, I like it. Because I had two of them. Oh, I've already gone ahead and cut one apart. There you go, as if by magic. So that is going to be on the front. You can see that it's, it's too big. So under it, I'm going to mat some other paper and I'm going to add a bit of lace and a bit of some bits and bobs. I've picked this one. It's like a ticking with a fleur de lis damask type pattern in the background. I really like it. So I'm going to cut this one to about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch shorter on all sides. So we know that measures five by seven. But once you've put the spines on, you'll you'll find that the width it's a little bit wider so we know that bit of chipboard we use were five inches wide but if i show you measurement at spine now that's measuring five and an eighth yeah so i'm going to cut my paper to five inches wide and i'm going to cut it an eighth of an inch short on the height so i'm going to cut it by five by six and fifteen no six and seven eighths an eighth of an inch short not a sixteenth dab woman so i'm going to cut it five by six and seven eighths and I'm going to cut the same size piece for the back of my journal and I don't know what I'm putting on that one yet probably I will use the same we'll see how that goes so I'll get my big chompy chopper you can well, you can cut that with me yeah I'll let you stay for the cutting of that <laughs> So first I'm going to cut the height to five inches because that's what we threw on for the front. And I'm going to put my arm on, put your arm on to measure my height. So my height wants to be just an eighth of an inch under the seven inches. So that's that. Put that away because we're just dealing with front cover at the minute. Put that away, keep that, and I'll put away everything else we're not quite using. So my desk doesn't look like there's a jumble sale occurring. Oop. That's that. So that fits on nicely. We've just got a sixteenth of an inch of that craft paper all the way around. If you've wrapped your chipboard in a paper that you want to keep as your cover, then you won't need to do this bit. Right. I'm deciding whether I want to round my corners. I think I want to round my corners. I just do on this piece. So I'm going to grab my corner rounder and I'm going to go for the smallest, the teeny tiny one. Look at all. Detritus all over my desk. Just a bit. And I'm going to give this a bit of an inking. So now I know that fits perfectly. I'm going to build the rest of my cover like this. Check my flared leaves right way up it is. If it's not, I, I, I barely think anyone would notice. So I'm going to give this a bit of ink. I'm using my favourite Distress Oxide in a walnut stain. It's lighter than the regular Distress Ink in a walnut stain. But it's darker and not quite as orangey as the vintage photo so it's just is my favorite for making things look vintagey and aged i don't need any on my face that looks vintagey and aged you know <laughs> do 
don't know why I said that. <laughs> because I'm mad. Right. So, oh, I like. I do that. That could be done as it is, couldn't it? You won't need to put anything else on. But I just want to make it look more junk journal and less mini album, if you know what I mean. I'm tempted, you know, to get rid of that frame. We could. Because you don't see the frame at the bottom. Yeah, I'm going to cut this down. Can you see this bit? I'm going to cut that part of the frame off. Get your little chopper. Yeah, that's going to give me more room to put some... Little bits and bobs round. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's a good idea, I think. We've not lost too much. We've still got the flowers in the corner. We've still got flowers here. I'm now deciding if I need to cut some off bottom. Yes, I do. Just a touch. There we go. I like that even better now because I've got more room to put things around that frame. And to do that, I'm reverting to my scrap box. Yeah. I want some bitties and bobbies just sticking out around it. Some bits of book page. I'm going to start tearing and messing. Some bits of whatever I've got in here. What's this? An arithmetic. Arithmetic? Yeah, that'll do me. Oh, this is old. You can tell a paper's really old sometimes, it where it, where it tears. And I, I do want a bit of music paper. Oh, look, we've got a bit of coffee dyed paper with some patterns on. I've got a music paper page. Oh, I found a scrap of music paper. You always want to use my scrap bits first. Now, I'm not putting it all the way around, but I do want to just have little bits sticking out. I'm going to ink that edge. I'm going to tear that bit again. And I'm not going to glue anything till I'm happy. Just a bit more ink there. That doesn't need to be there because we're not going to see it. Let's ink that. Make it look a bit better. I may even I might stick some pearls or I don't know. What about if I put some of that embossing glaze on? That might be an idea. That's the Tim Holtz embossing glaze. It's like see-through embossing powder. I don't know if I want to go that shiny and blingy on front. I really don't. That's looking good. Got a bit of that sticking out. Not a lot, just a bit. We like that. Now some of this somewhere. If I tear it in sort of a curve, I can have bits sticking out. I think that I might have gone a bit too far with curve on that. I might like that. Yeah, I think I do. Just, so I'm gonna ink that edge. We're not going to see that bit, so that can go like that. I then put this underneath, so you see what we're starting to make. I don't know, I just think it makes it a bit more junk journal and a bit less mini album. I'm tempted to put a full layer of torn music sheet behind it. Voila. Enter. Full sheet of music paper. Yeah. That's going to happen. I'm going to grab my tear ruler. I'll use my see-through one so you can see what on earth I'm up to. 
it's not a very busy sheet of music paper this so I think it's going to look good I'm not measuring but I just want it straightish it's that old straightish thing I want to have my treble clefts peeking out yeah I like that so I've torn down the left and I'm going to tear, 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 tear along the bottom I like that. The Bonnie Earl of Moray. He's not French, is he? But do we, does it matter? <laughs> we'll tear straight through my Louis' name. So yeah, I'm gonna tear. I'm gonna turn this upside down to do the tearing. If you get a different tear on the bit you've torn off and the bit that you're leaving, if you've got a tear rule, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. Mm. Yeah, we're not going to get the bonnie. We're going to just going to tear the bonnie earl of Moray off. We'll see that there's some writing there, but we won't know what it said. Yeah, I like that better. It still says Scottish folk song. Oh, I could turn it off and use that. Oh, I don't know now. <laughs> I did want to use that one with treble clefts, but I actually think it looks odd. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use the back. How mad with that? So I'm going to ink that up. I might even get some bits of lace out. And do some up. So we've got that and that. Yeah, I like that. So then I'm going to bring my other bits back in. I'm going to put my ticking under. So we've got that there. Yeah. Took in a bit, took in a bit, mate. Even though that's music paper and we had music, we've got other music paper, I still like it. So I'm keeping it. Which side of that did they end up inking? That, I just can't see it very well. And I want that there. Can you see how it's just building up and it's looking a bit junky rather than all perfect and pristine? Oh, I've got this hanging about on my desk. No, I don't know. That's actually about three sheets of book page. I did it. It was when I was sewing something and I wanted to check the size of my zigzag stick stitch. And it's just hang, been hanging about. I've got a box full of these all made up ready somewhere and I don't know where they are. Silly woman. If I'd done that just on one page, that might look nice, but I think that's going to be a little bit too much. We need to introduce a little bit of colour. I think they want a bit more green. So I'm going to delve in my box and look for some bits and bobs of this painter's paper. I like that. Oh, look at the, what's that. Oh, it's a bit of green doily, but there's no doily edges left on because I've ripped them all off and used them. I don't know if I'm going to be happy with this green colour of the doily. I think I like the painter's paper colour better. I think I need to introduce some colour up here. Well, poke out, mate. Poke out. Yeah. I like that. So I'm going to stick all this together. I'm going to use my ATG gun on this. Use any glue you're happy with. And I'm going to stick this bit down to my music paper. I 
this glue gun's got a little bit squeaky, hasn't it? I think it needs oiling. And now I'm getting deja vu, like I've said that in a video before. Right, there's no wiggle room with this, so I'm going to have to be right good positioning this. Oh, <laughs> once it's done, it's done. It's already wanting to stick. Yeah, I'm happy, Bunny. I've got more sticking out that side than that, but it all adds to the junky journaliness, I think. <laughs> junky journaliness, is that even a word? It is now. Right. And I'm going to stick these pieces to the back of this piece before I then stick that onto there. So, we know we like that piece down there. I'm going to stick it on with art glitter glue. So it's going to stick nice and quick. Oh, I just broke my glue dangle. One of my beads fell off. So... Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we know it's more music paper, but hey ho. That's going to stick out there. We've got this for the bottom, haven't we? I'm just placing it here to make sure it's not, I don't want it to stick out over that border. I just don't. And I'm wasting a lot of this, I know, but we don't want it dropping off, do we? I like that, like that. What we're having at top, a bit of book page. So, that's there like that. Hmm, I like that. And I want my bit of green over here. Oh, where's it gone? There it is. I'm, I'm very conscious that's a very small bit and I might muck up. So do you know what? I'm going to be very extravagant here and tear a new bit of green painter's paper off my big chunk. Come here, big chunk. There we go. There we go, big chunk. It's all screwed up with all sorts. Well, I'm not running out any time soon, am I? So... There's been frugal and then there's been silly. <laughs> I think I like it like that as well, going a bit further down. Yeah. So, oh, I'm just going to take that bit off. I'm going to ink my edge. And then stick it on. This is going nowhere we are glitter glue on it. Sticks it sticks, shall we say? Sticks really good. Now I've just got to decide if I want any more bits. I like that. And at the bottom. I think I want to put... Sorry, I'm not sure. We didn't ask you really, did we? So, whatever, you're a tip. I then think I will be putting a cluster on there. So that bit there looks a little bit empty, but I'm going to grab some a cluster from somewhere and pop it on at some point. So let's see what it looks like on top of the book now. I'll just put my drawer of scrappy doodles away. There we go. I quite like that. Do you know what? I think I want to cut that piece down so that we see even more of the brown. I really do. If we see a bit more just like that, I think that is going to be even better. So I'm going to cut that down by another eighth of an inch because I can. So it's now going to measure, oh, I've got to get a big trimmer out, oh, really can't be bothered. <laughs> it's an eighth of an inch under five, yeah, by a quarter of an inch under 
seven. And I've got to get big trimmer out for that. It's very unwieldy, this thing. And then when I put it down, sometimes it falls over and clunks me on foot. So we'll cut this down to a quarter of an inch under seven, which is actually six and three quarters, believe it or not. Would you ever credit that? So. Ink it up. One more corner to chomp. Yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah. I, th I just like that much better. I think it was a little bit too big before. Yeah. Pop that back on front. Yeah, I really like seeing a little bit more of that craft paper around it. I also think I'm going to grunge up these edges a little bit more. Rather than just having ink right on the edge. I think that's going to look better. Yeah. Let's have a look, see. We've still got Fleur de Lis right way up, although we don't see it Yeah. How much better is that? Then when we've put some lace on the spine, and we just see yay much of the lace showing. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Then we'll have a cluster on the front. I'm thinking I want a bit of bling up here or pearls. I may put bling or pearls up there. I can decide on that later. So let's get this stuck onto the book before we change his minds any further. So again, I'm going to use art glitter because it sticks so well. You use what you prefer. Like I've said before, a lot of people like the uh, Fabri-Tac and 3-in-1. It does do the job well. I just can't breathe after I've used it. <laughs> I'm going to stick that one onto there first. As long as it's straightish, I'm a happy bunny. It needs to be straighter than it were though. There we there we go. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And then that's gonna go on there. Now for this one it's an even bigger area. And I'm going to do the middle with my ATG gun and the outsides with the art glitter. Oh, you'll be watching me put art glitter on for three days. And I'll need to refill my bottle when I've done. Here we go. I'm going to open my book up for putting this on as well. I want to get that edge lined up nicely. Because the other side's going to have some lace. It's not as big of an issue. We've got a smidgen of wiggle time if we don't press too hard in the middle. There we go. And I know it's not perfect because I haven't got my head right over it. But it doesn't have to be, does it? Got a bit of glue squidge there. That's going to get covered up by lace anyway. So that's the front of our little book. I really do like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece on here. And then we'll put the lace on that piece. Right, get your papers back out, woman. 
I think I want to use a piece that is a little bit busier on the back because we're not going to see it back, are we? And if it's too light, you'll stick it on your desk, put it in something. Oh, I like that. Let's get that page off. Oh, other side's gorgeous, but this is the problem with Graphic 45 and Stamp Area and quite a few other paper lines. Both sides are too nice, so you can't decide which to use. Right, the back. I'm going to fold the book back up to measure the back because on the back we've got a spine at either side so the widths might really surprise you. It always surprises me. Grab your tea ruler. So the width of the back is actually five and a quarter. Wow. So I'm going to cut my paper to just a smidgen under five wide by six and three quarters right, big choppers out again we'll do the width first smidgeroonie under five only because i don't want it coming over edge at chipboard i cut even though it's wrapped with paper just a smidgen not even a sixteenth of an inch perhaps not even a thirty twoths of an inch if that's even a measurement and then six and three quarter heights. I'm going to round the corners with my corner trimmer. Corner rounder even. We'll ink it up. And then I'm going to stick it on the same way I stuck front. I'm going to use my ATG tape in the middle. And I'm going to use art glitter around edges. That's really just a time saving exercise. You can stick it with anything you want. I must have said that 100 times throughout this project. It's never a case that only one glue will work. So you don't have to always use the glue that you see someone use. And it, it, I know it can be a little bit bewildering sometimes as a beginner. There's plenty of people who've done videos out there just on glue. I, I'm, I'm not doing one. I haven't done one because I probably forget half of what I wanted to say. I'm not that organised. <laughs> sometimes knowledge is there. It's just a struggle to get it out. So I've got this right way up. Yeah. Then I'm going to fold my book up to place this on. I'm more worried about top and bottom because edges are going to have lace going over onto them. There we go. Now I can open it up just to press it down. I'll get a burnish in the middle where that ATG tape is. There we go. So that's the back of my book. Oh my likes. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing there as what I'm about to do here. Right. For my spine, don't, if you watched last time, you will have seen me use, say I'm going to put some wide lace on the spine. Then I grabbed one and it just weren't going to be wide enough. I have had a dig through my stash and come up with this one, which is wider. I'm going to pop that on there. Now, can you see, once your lace is on, you don't see underneath. That it, yeah, we can still see colour at Tyvek a little bit. We don't notice that once we get lace on. Now, there's two ways you can do lace. You can overlap it onto the inside and then cover the ends up. If I were doing a nice, neat, perfect mini album, I'd probably do that. But not for a junk journal. I just want it. On the outside just to come a little bit longer than my spines and I'm an happy bunny. I perhaps will cut this end just to get a little bit neater than it already is because it's going to fray over time. No need to start it off frayed. So 
Where's, oh, I found my Timmy scissors. I had to go do my spare scissors because I lost my Timmy's, but I've found them now. So I'm just going to cut this lace a little bit longer. Perhaps I'll probably give me some more than I need. A little bit longer than the length of my spine. Yeah. Now again, fabric tack three in one. Absolutely fabulous glue for doing this way, but I don't use it. So I'm going to pass my book up. I'm going to pop my lace on and I'm going to see how much is going to come over. We're just going to have a little bit coming over like that. Yeah. So what I want now is I want the lace on the front of my book to look good. If it doesn't look so brilliant on back, I'm not going to go home crying. Yeah. So I'm going to start and I'm going to use art glitter. I'm going to put a line of art glitter glue down here. Art glitter glue does stick fabric. Get your lace. That's how I want it to look. Just going to press it gently. And I'm going to fold my book back over. <laughs> see? See? It moved. Right. Move that out your way, woman. Give you send some room on the desk. That's my main concern at the minute. What it's going to look like when it comes over onto the front of the book. I think you've got more time to manipulate it when you use art glitter as well. Because it doesn't dry as quick as the fabric tack. Because I've put that over far too much. There we go. That's looking good to me. So I'm going to grab my tea ruler. A tea ruler is really good for this. I can see that I'm slightly too far over at top, so I'm just going to pull it back. Now I'm going to leave that. For a good five to ten minutes before I'd even dare to touch it again. So in that time I'm going to go away, make me send a cup of tea and I'll be back. And I'm back. It's been almost ten minutes. I'm just too impatient. Can't wait ten minutes. So now that, you'll see, that's stuck. Yeah, if I pulled it now it probably would come off. It's not going anywhere. And after say, 24 hours, that will be completely cured. And that is not going anywhere without ripping all the paper off. So art glitter does stick fabric pretty good. Now I'm just going to fold my book back up. Yeah, that's what I'm going to see on my edge. I like that. So if we look over now, we're going to see about the same on back. But if it's not as straight on back, I'm not going to run home crying. So we need to stick the rest of it down. I've turned my book upside down for this purpose because I find working on my right easier. Just put the lid on your ink woman before you have a huge disaster on your hands. Right, so I'm going to put my glue this time onto my lace and I'm going to glue onto thicker parts of my lace. I think I'll cross bottom of the book I'll put a little line like that. So if you use thicker parts of your lace, it's not going to come through. If it does, world won't end. It dries. Might feel a bit crispy. Still looks good. Ooh. So all the way up thicker parts of lace. I don't, because there's a, quite an open piece in the middle of this lace, I just don't want big blobs of glue showing there. I'm going to put some there. Then I'm going to put a line just along the edge of my paper because we know that's where lace is going to come to. 
just down here and a line across top of book again and I'm going to lay that down and because this lace is a bit stretchy I'm just going to stretch that bit a little bit I'm going to press it down gently and I'm going to bend my book and I'm going to move that over just to check that it looks okay. Again, with lace being stretchy, I can manipulate that a little bit at this point. Oh, that's fine, actually. I'm quite happy with how that went. So that bit's pressed down nicely, and I'm just going to open my book back up. You will see that that is going to look a bit wrinkly. It's going to do, because we've opened book up. Just pat it down. Pat it down. But we don't want to move that further over. I'm then just going to grab my tea ruler again. This is just like my final check, this, with tea ruler. Yeah, perhaps move that over a bit. Perhaps move that back a bit. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So again, I'm going to go, now I've got my tea, I'm now going to go and get a biscuit to go along with it. And when that is nice and dry, I'm going to come back and trim it. Yeah, so two ticks. And I'm back again. I've had my chocky bit cake. We're very yummy. I've still got my tea, some tea left. <laughs> and I made an executive decision while I was gone and I cut my piece of paper back. Let's turn this right way around now instead of looking at it upside down. That is all now dry and lovely. I'm pretty happy. So I'm going to come in and cut the top and the bottom. Oh, this bit is just always nerve wracking, even for me now. No matter how many I've made, this bit's going to nerve wreck me. So, I'm going to cut just about an eighth of an inch taller than book. It always wants to go out a little bit towards the end. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to do it the same on bottom. You know what, I'm going to do it from inside. About an eighth of an inch longer than book. Now, what you can do with here, if you don't want that to fray too much, you can get a glue called fray stop. But I just don't think that's quite necessary. I'm just going to trim that a bit. Can you see how that bit went a bit longer? I'm really not happy with it. That'll do. What I do is this. I get a little bit of glue. You can use PVA, you can use your art glitter, use what you want. I'll just put a bit on my finger. And I just lightly go along. I'm not using enough that it's going to make it all shiny but what it does is it just sort of glues all them little ends together they still look a bit frayish and frayable but they're not going to fray down your book in in time because you don't know how long whoever gets this book's going to want to keep it for do you so just touching it lightly on I did once buy some of that fray stop and I couldn't see a difference, so I went to, to just using a bit of glue. There we go. So that's our left spine done. I quite like it. I think I've got a bit more lace showing at top than bottom, but hey ho. Did world end? I don't think it really did, did it? <laughs> Look, I ended up with knee on back, I think, than front. That's all about. And if you find you've got any bits not stuck down enough to your liking, like there. Just come in with your glue. It's best if you've got a little pointy one like this and you can stick it down some more. But there's enough glue on there that that's going nowhere. And then I think you'll agree, you can't see that we could see a bit of Tyvek through. You just don't see that by this point. So, yes. I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece of paper for this part. Yeah, I've cut it too narrow. Sorry, too wide, because when I cut it, I forgot that this bit were narrower. So I'm going to cut it down another eighth of an inch. Because that part at book measures 4 and 15 sixteenths. Where's tea ruler gone? Measure it again like that, and it measures bang on five. So we, all, we want to take a quarter of an inch off. And we want to cut it to four and three quarters of an inch. 
which is the bit I, I missed it out. So I made an executive decision to do something with Artie and I did it wrong. I, I'll wait next time. So it now measures four and three quarter inches wide by six and three quarter inches high. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of measuring in this project for me, isn't there? But doing the actual book, I think it's worth doing that bit of measuring. If you get it wrong, you can always cover it up with other bits. And that's going to go on there. I do intend putting a pocket on, but I'm not doing that now. For now, I'm just going to stick that on. And then I can go ahead and put the lace on that bit of spine. So again, I've gone around the middle with my ATG gun. And round the edges with my art glitter. I mean, you can use PVA for this. It just takes longer to dry. I think the paper's thick enough that I'm using that it wouldn't wrinkle with PVA. I think it's got a higher water content. I don't know what they do to this art glitter glue to make it wrinkle your paper less than ordinary PVA glue. But it works, whatever they're doing. So let's pop that on. I'm just going to put that towards me, make sure I've got it straight. Yeah. I'll flap that out so I can get a good press down. So that's the outside and I'm going to put another piece of lace on there exactly as I put that piece of lace on there. But it's already starting to come together really quite nicely that isn't it? I like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that without you again. And you'll see that all finished in the next part. So. That's everything for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.